JavaScript arrow functions, and one gotcha about them that you need to know. What up devs, I'm Derek. I'm a front-end developer based out of Los Angeles, California, and today we're gonna go over JavaScript functions their arrow function syntax, and one gotcha about them that you need to know. Uh, we're also gonna go over the shorthand syntax of each as well because there is a shorthand method to writing functions if they are simple enough. But before we start though, just so you know, there is no IE support for arrow function syntax. So rip IE, gone but never forgotten, shout out to a real one, I guess. So before we write any code, basically at its highest level, all JavaScript functions are, are just reusable blocks of code that execute a particular set of tasks that you define. There's like a super lightweight task that you wanna get done, maybe a, a utility function that you write that just does a little bit of math or something. The perfect use case for that is of course a function. You can use it all throughout your script at your discretion when and where you need it. So let's dive in. All right, so I've got my code editor here. We have three files set up. We've got uh, functions that we're gonna write in ES5 syntax first. Then we're gonna take those functions and convert them into ES6 syntax, which is of course the arrow function syntax. And then there is a shorthand method way of writing arrow functions, which we will do last over here in this call. All right, so first let's start with a function declaration that takes no parameters. And again, this is ES5 syntax using the function keyword. And that looks like this. So we're gonna have the function keyword, the name of our function, the parentheses, and then basically what the body of that function does or executes. And in this case, this is just a simple function called random number, which just returns math.random. Super simple, super basic. That's an ES5 function declaration with no parameters. So next up will be a function declaration with one parameter, very similar to this guy, and that looked like this. So we have, of course, the function keyword. We're just saying, hey, we're about to write a function. This one's called is positive, and this takes in a parameter. Now, all a parameter is, is a variable. We come up with this, we name this, this is, this is totally up to us. And in this case, we're just gonna call this one none. And all this function is gonna do is return that num if it is greater than or equal to zero. That's all this function is gonna do. But functions, if we need them to, can obviously take in more than one parameter. So let's take a quick look at a function declaration that takes in multiple parameters. And that looks like this. So we have function, we're just gonna call this one sum, takes in the two parameters, A and B. Again, totally up to us. We could name this num1, num2, and then of course we'd have to um, put that down here as well, num1, num2. And of course, all this function is gonna do is just return those two parameters added together. Now, and just a quick sidebar, there is a difference between parameters and arguments. So when this sum function is actually called or invoked, let's say we do that here on this line, at that point, we're gonna pass in our parameters as arguments. Yeah, so this is calling the sum function or invoking it. So uh, something to note is maybe on like a job interview, you might get asked, what's the difference between a parameter and an argument? When the function is declared and when it is written, they're called parameters. But when the function is called or invoked, like it is on line 20 here, they're called arguments. So that's the difference there. Let me clear that out. But yeah, this is just a function that takes in multiple parameters, in this case, just two, and then just returns them uh, added together. All right, now there's a little bit different way to write functions, and that is a function expression. So, so far we've done three function declarations, but a function expression looks like this. So here we're gonna have the var keyword, the name of our function, which is going to equal the function keyword, our parentheses, and then of course the body or the guts of our function. So this one is just another example of random number. We're just gonna call this one random number two, which equals a function, and it's just gonna return math.random. So this is a function expression. So, all right, uh, an anonymous function. So that's gonna look like this. We have a document, we're just grabbing the document. We're gonna add an event listener and we're gonna listen for a click event. And then we call the function keyword, open up our parentheses here and then have our curly braces with the code that we want to execute. So this function isn't assigned to a variable like in a function expression and it isn't named anything specific here after the function keyword like in a function declaration. It's simply anonymous. So this is an anonymous function that's attached to uh, an event listener. It's a very common pattern that you'll see in a lot of scripts or applications. And last but not least is an IIFE, sometimes called an IFE, and this basically stands for an immediately invoked function expression. And that looks like this. So an immediately invoked 
function expression is a JavaScript function that is executed immediately after it is defined. It's a way to create self-contained scope and execute code without polluting the global scope of the application or script. These guys are often used in conjunction with, I think it's the module pattern, and is basically just to create modular and reusable code. So yeah, this is six examples of functions in JavaScript using the old ES5 syntax, but now we're gonna take those and convert those to arrow function syntax uh, in this column here. And the first will be our random number function here. So let's actually take this, paste that over here, and the arrow function syntax is actually very simple. All you're gonna wanna do is drop the function keyword. We're gonna put a const there, because we're gonna assign this to a variable. That variable name is of course, random number. Add an equals, break up our parentheses and surround that with equal signs. But the second one is actually gonna be something called a fat arrow. And then we open up our function like that. So with ES5 arrow function syntax, function declarations automatically become expressions. So all functions written in ES6 arrow function syntax are going to be function expressions. And that's all there really is to it. So let's take the second example, our is positive function, and we'll convert that to arrow function syntax. So again, just drop the uh, function keyword. We're going to add const here, add our equal sign, our fat arrow, and then it opens up with the curly braces there. And then of course we have the body of our function. So that is converting a function with one parameter to an arrow function syntax, very straightforward. And the same thing follows suit with our sum function. You guys pretty much know the drill at this point. We're going to drop our function keyword. I'm gonna add const equal sign and our fat arrow and that is it. Now an ES5 function expression when converting that to an arrow function syntax, very, very similar. We're gonna change var to const because of course we want the latest syntax for declaring variables. Drop our function keyword and then add our fat arrow right after the parentheses. And there you have it. Pretty straightforward. Now, an anonymous function as an error function syntax looks a little weird, but let's take our code from over here and paste it. We have our document at event listener click. So same deal as the examples above. Uh, we're actually gonna drop the function keyword here, and then we just need to add our fat arrow after the parentheses. And it opens up with our code in the body that it's gonna execute. And in this case, console.logs the string click, and that's it. So it looks a little funny. It's just a parentheses with a fat arrow, but that is an anonymous function in the ES6 arrow function syntax. And we'll see something a little bit similar here with the immediately invoked uh, function expression or the iffy. So let's actually take this code, let's paste it over here and we're gonna drop our function keyword, very similar as the example above, and then add our fat arrow after this. So you can take an immediately invoked function expression and convert it to arrow function syntax, which looks a little cleaner. It's a, it might be a look a little confusing here with all the parentheses, but this is valid syntax. So here's six examples of the ES5 functions that we wrote over here as arrow functions. Uh, converting them, like I said, is very simple. We just drop that function keyword. We're gonna assign them to const, and then we add our parentheses and our fat arrow, and that's pretty much it. Now there is a shorthand method to writing some of these, uh, so we'll do that in this column over here. So depending on the complexity of your arrow function in your JavaScript, it can be truncated down to less syntax, to less code overall, and written in shorthand. So let's take our first example, random num, and we'll paste that over here. So because all random num is doing is simply just returning us something, we can actually drop the curly braces like this, and we can also drop the return return keyword, and we can write that function like this. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot less text, and it's all on one line, which is really nice. And it just helps your code look a little bit cleaner. But when you do omit the curly braces like we've done here, it will implicitly, or in other words, absolutely return this value by default. This just basically means that three lines of code now becomes one. But you know, of course, if you, if you have additional work that you wanna get done in your function, you can do that. Just know that you will have to add your curly braces back in. And you will have to add your return keyword back in also, otherwise you will get an error. So yeah, now let's do the same thing with our is positive function. Paste that over here. And this one will be a little bit different. So we can start by dropping the curly braces, bump this up, knock out that curly brace. Of course, we don't need our return keyword at this point. And because this function does have one parameter and only one parameter, we can actually even drop the parentheses as well. Now, if you have no parameters like this function up here, we can't just have an empty set of parentheses because that's, that's obviously not gonna make sense. So if we have no parameters, we need our empty parentheses there. But if we do have one parameter, we can omit them like we did in this line here. And this looks super clean. Everything's on one line. 
It might look a little weird at first, but once you start to get used to writing functions truncated down like this in shorthand, uh, it really does make your code a lot cleaner. So now let's do the shorthand of a function expression with arrow function syntax, of course, that has multiple parameters. So let's grab our code from over here, our sum function, copy that over here. Now this has multiple params, so we can still drop the curly braces, bump that up to one line. We can drop our uh, return keyword, but because this has multiple parameters, in this case, two, a and B, we have to leave the parentheses there. Otherwise we will get an error. We can't do something like this. This just doesn't make a lot of sense and your script will throw an error at this point. So there is only one parameter like on this function. We can omit them. If there's none, we have to keep them. But if we have more than one, we have to keep them also. So just something to know. All right, so the shorthand for a function expression. So let's grab our function expression random two or random num two from over here, paste that over. And this is going to look very similar uh, to the one up here. But yeah, we are just going to drop our curly braces, bump it up all onto one line. We don't need our return keyword. And it will simply look like that, which is basically the same syntax as this here. But you you've seen this already. This is just the shorthand for a function expression. And I'm actually going to space these out so everything lines up with the other columns. There, that look, that's looking a little better. So yeah, an anonymous function shorthand. We'll take our anonymous function uh, from over here. We'll paste it. And there's no parameters or anything here, but we can again truncate this down to uh, everything that's on one line so we can get rid of our curly braces and we can get rid of this extra semicolon since we're already gonna have one here at the end. Bump this up onto one line, get rid of our last curly brace and there you have it. This is an anonymous arrow function that's shorthanded uh, which is attached to an event listener. So looking pretty clean. Again, everything's on one line and it just looks nice. And last but not least, uh, an iffy and immediately invoked function expression. You can actually shorthand this. I've never personally done it in anything that I've worked on. I've never seen it in anything I've worked on, but just so you know, you can do the shorthand method for an immediately invoked function expression. And that looks like this. So we can drop our curly braces, our extra semicolon and bump that all onto one line and it's going to basically implicitly return this value. This looks a little funny, but this is the shorthand way of writing an arrow function as an immediately invoked function expression. Um, again, not really sure on the use case for this. I've never personally used it, but just so you know, you can do this. All right, now the gotcha. If you are writing in the ES5 syntax and you're not using arrow functions, of course, we have function declarations and function expressions. And the difference between them is, is that function declarations get hoisted while function expressions do not. A function declaration will always be put at the top of the scope, which means you can make calls to that function even before it's declared somewhere later in the code. But when you have a function expression, the function doesn't actually get created until that code is reached in the script, which means you'll get an error if you try to call random num2 beforehand. So of the two ways of doing this, which should you use? There's really no universal best practice here, uh, but most folks these days, at least in my opinion, tend to lead more towards function expressions, mainly because since they're not hoisted, it makes it a little bit easier to understand where they belong in the context of a script. Because scripts, you know, they're read from top to bottom. So when you actually reach this function in the script, it makes sense that it should be there in the context of where it's actually at. And it's not being called like beforehand or anything like that, which can be a little confusing. Because if you do try to call this beforehand, uh, you'll actually get an error. Whereas with a function declaration, you won't. That's because of course, like I mentioned, it's hoisted. That's the difference. So devs, that's about it. There's six examples of ES5 functions. We converted them to ES6 arrow function syntax and then uh, converted those to the shorthand method as well. So you can see both sides of that. And that's about it. If you like this video, click event that like button. If you're feeling chatty, definitely leave a comment or any feedback on this video, positive or negative, it's all good. Uh, I put this together the best I could, so hopefully that this helps. But hey, if you enjoyed this and you got some value out of this video and you'd like to see more videos like this kind of in this style, all you have to do is... Thank you.